How many know it's only by the grace of God that we are who we are? God has been so faithful to us. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, thank you for 26 years of faithful servants. Thank you, Lord, for keeping them. Lord, I even thank you for their limitations because it helps them to realize how desperately they need you and that they can't do anything apart from you. Thank you for where you brought them. Thank you for how you kept them. Thank you for how you favored them. Thank you for how you've blessed them. Thank you for all of the lives that you have allowed Dr. Morris and his lovely wife Anita to touch and to impact for the kingdom of God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you. Now, Lord, as I stand, would you think with my mind, speak with my lips, and stand in my body. Stand up for me. Speak through me. Have your way with me. Lord, we need to hear from you. Teach us now, Holy Spirit. Preach through us now. Reach hearts and minds through your word. Help it to work through the, all of the hard stuff in our hearts and our lives and cut through that stuff and do your work to go forth for your purpose and your glory, your honor, and your praise. We ask this now in the blessed name of Jesus our Lord. Let the church say amen. 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 If you open up your Bibles, if you would, with me uh, to Romans chapter 12. We are going to land on verses uh, 3 through 8, uh, but we'll read uh, verses 1 and 2 and work through that a little bit to give us some context and uh, what I call a prerequisition for verses 3 through 8. Amen. I praise the Lord for Hope Alliance Bible Church family and I and I, I just wish you all a happy and blessed uh, 26 years. Um, I thank God for how gracious he has been and how kind and favorable he has been uh, to Dr. Morris and Anita. I, I, we see it. We hear it. You modeled Jesus. You led well. You served well. And, and all through our community and, and through families and through our, even through our city and our nation, um, and our denomination, um, your names have, have been brought up in many circles about your anointed, spirit-filled leadership. Thank you for mentoring me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for modeling Christ in leadership and pastorship and shepherding for me. You have been so valuable in my life and in, in my transition, even from Providence. Brother George <laughs> Jones, Brother James Jones from Providence. He, he, Dr. Morse took me in and, and Annette in and Anita and they, they just became that, that bridge that, that helped us to walk in that new season of life. So we are eternally grateful to you all and we love you. I pray for you every day. I'm on my knees for you every day. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8 says, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who was among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in ministry. Or if, if it's teaching, in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. As I uh, look at this 
passage of scripture in this text, I was reminded about how Paul uses the anatomy of the body uh, and its system uh, to use as a metaphor for the church in the body of Jesus Christ. I was reminded that the body is made up of so many systems. The system that includes the nervous system, the circulatory system, the muscular system, the lymphatic system, taking you back to school and anatomy, <laughs> skeletal system, and even the immune system. These systems are all interdependent of one another. And when one system goes down, the rest of the body is negatively impacted. When one system goes down, the body is negatively impacted. I know we've all experienced that. Amen. I can remember serving uh, at St. Vincent, uh, Dr. Morrison, where I did my residency for chaplains. See, and um, for that whole year, St. Vincent, did they have a, a, a one area that they really uh, focus on where they make more and generate most of their income for their hospital, and that's orthopedics. They're orthopedic specialists. So if you need back, knee, hip, neck, arm, St. Vincent has the best doctors and surgeons. They specialize in orthopedic. They only have three or four areas that they specialize. One of them is orthopedic. But when I would go to pre-surgery and pray with uh, those who were going into surgery for orthopedics, most of them were going in, a lot of them, for hip surgery. And when I was talking to them and praying with them about what they were going in for hip surgery, here's what they shared. It was a common thread. Most of them said, I had my first replacement I'm in my hip, I'm getting a second replacement. Or I'm getting my first replacement, and after I get through with this one, I have to have this one replaced. Why do you have to have both hips replaced? Well, because when one part of the body is negatively impacted, or one part of the system of the body goes down, or one member of the body goes down, the rest of the body is negatively impacted. You with me? That means when one of the hips begin to misfunction and have pain and get weak where you can't use it and stand on it, then you start walking with a limp and guess what you do? You favor and put the weight up on the other side. So once you get ready to have surgery on the one that needs repairing, because you have favored with the other side, the other hip, and the other hip was holding your weight, and the other hip was carrying you because this side couldn't carry you. Now you need this hip replaced. What's the point? What's the point? Well, the Apostle Paul here in chapter 12, he's using this, uh, I would say, this premise here uh, to talk about the body of Christ and how important we are to each member. How you are important, how I am important. And I believe that that's his premise here. He, he teaches here uh, Throughout his letters in 1 Corinthians 12, I looked at uh, Dr. Ron's notes, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, and even here in Romans here, he talks about this body and, and how we are all gifted in this body to serve. So I'm giving you a subject today that says, I am gifted to serve. I am gifted. See, some of us, we already missed that because we don't believe it. But I want you to encourage your neighbor and tell them, I, look at them and say, I am gifted, I am gifted to, serve. to serve. Look at them and say, you are gifted, you are gifted to, serve. to serve. Here in chapter 12, the Apostle Paul approaches uh, uh, this, 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 this letter here in this, this chapter. He, he starts off in worship and talking about worship for the Christian. And he follows it in verses 3 and 8. He instructs the believer about their service in the body by using these gifts. Therefore, I submit to you that our service will flow out of our worship. Ah, 
Our service will flow out of our worship. Paul uses God's mercy as the basis for this appeal to the believers in Rome. Now, it's interesting because Paul never even went to Rome. Even, um, went to Rome. He didn't plant this church. As a matter of fact, he was, uh, he was uh, going to go to Rome. And he was, uh, he was stuck in, in, in between a decision to go to Rome or go to Jerusalem. And he wanted to go to Rome, but he had some affairs that he had to tend to in Jerusalem. So he was stuck between a rock and a hard place. Which, what should I do? Which way should I go? Should I go south, east, or, or northwest? And so Paul decided, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write Rome. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to write this letter. And so we have this letter of Paul to, uh, to those, the church in Rome. So, so he writes, but when he starts here in verses, it's familiar in chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 in context um, uh, that will line us up with the following verses, uh, the following six verses. I want to lay this out for a premise for you. Here's the premise. I must become a living sacrifice, suffering my life in worship that flows into selfless service. Ah, I mean, what, what do you mean? By, well, verses 1 and 2, therefore I urge you, he's, he's pleading with these, these Christians. He's, uh, he's pleading with them, brothers, that when he says brothers, it's about the believers, in view of God's mercy to offer, to present your bodies as living sacrifices to be holy and acceptable to God. This is our spiritual act of worship. Got it? Do not uh, uh, conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. The Apostle Paul here is instructing these believers here in Rome and us this morning to give ourselves wholly, right, to God, offering our bodies as living sacrifices, now let me pause for a minute. Before you get up and do anything in the morning, before, you, before your feet hit the floor, let your knees hit the floor. And when your knees hit the floor, offer yourself to the Lord. Say, Lord, I offer myself, my body, as a living sacrifice. I want to be holy and acceptable unto you. I want to be pleasing to you. Today, I mean, just turn your hands over and just lay them before him and say, I offer myself to you. I want my life to be pleasing to you. So I'm in my, my worship, I worship you by offering myself to you. I begin my day by offering myself to you. And watch and see what flows out of that. Watch what the Lord will do. Say, Lord, I, whatever you have for me today, whatever you want for me today, however you want me to contact, connect with people today, however you want me to represent you, I offer myself to you now. I die to myself. That, I, that you might live in me. I decrease that you might increase. I offer myself to you. Do that every morning. Right? I'm desperate for you. So I offer myself to you as a living sacrifice. The Apostle Paul says that worship should motivate us. And be motivate us, uh, uh, motivate us to service. That it, it should, out of that, out of the motivation of what God has already done for us, all of his mercies, it should motivate everything we do for him, right? Because God loves us so much. Because God has been so good to us. Because God, listen, because God, he loves us in our mess. That he, he's graced us. He keeps us. He provides for us. He, he, listen, listen, he saved us, amen. He sanctified us, amen. He filled us with his spirit. Now, we belong to him. He accepted us, right? That we're wanted, that we're loved, that we're significant to God, amen. Amen, our significance is found in him. When you listen, you, out of all of that, we should be doing and serving and worshiping God, amen. amen. So out of our worship, out of the mercy of what God has already done, what he's saying in these previous 11 chapters, now it should motivate us to worship God. Which moves into the, the, the following verses, where we're going to camp out this morning. This letter now moves from a heart of worship to a heart of service. Amen? That's what he does. He's, he moves now from out of our worship, the flow of worship, we move into service. Now, 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 listen, I want to encourage and edify us. I want to empower us to serve in our gifting because I want us 
to know that we are gifted to serve. And out of our gifting, we can serve the kingdom of God. Listen, God wants you. God, God needs you for the kingdom. Amen. He needs you. Listen, there's no plan B. The church is plan A, no plan B. God left us here, right, to represent the kingdom. We are making this appeal as though uh, uh, Christ, is, uh, Christ is in us. We're making this appeal, right? We are his, his, the, we are his representatives, right? Yes, amen. We are the ones who represent Christ. Yes, exactly. Amen. His ambassadors. Yes. We're his spokesmen. We're his mouthpiece. We're his body. Yes. His living organism. Yes. He left us here. And listen, listen. We, Doc might correct me on this. But he left us here for the world. He left us here for the world. That the world would know him through his church. That the world would experience his love through the church. Amen? That the, the world would experience Christ. Listen, how else are they going to get the gospel? How else are they going to see Jesus if they don't see him through his body? So, so, so he left us here for the world. Now here, in your notes, I want you to understand about this, this grace gift that God has given us. So, so number one in your notes, uh, um, you can put this over number two. I must serve through grace. I must serve through grace. If I'm going to serve in my gifting, I must serve through grace. How does that look? I must seek to understand this grace gift. I must get into the word, and the word get into me, that I can understand what this grace gift is all about. When we understand what this grace gift is all about, listen, we won't be hesitant to serve. Amen. We'll be excited about it. Now, hey, listen, we have the opportunity, the privilege to partner with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for kingdom work. God wants you. God wants to use you. God wants to use me. Listen, he can use a donkey, but he's using, he want to use you. He want to use his body. Amen. Said he can use a rock. He said, if you don't praise me, the rocks will cry. God can use whatever he wants you, but he chooses to use you. And he chooses to use me. What a privilege. What an honor to partner with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for the kingdom work of heaven. Hallelujah. We should be excited about serving him. It says here in Ephesians 4, 7 and 8, it says, But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ proportioned it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to mankind. Amen. In this passage, the Apostle Paul introduces to us the concept of spiritual gifts. He tells us here that God has given us these grace gifts to every Christian. It is, it is a spirit, spiritual gift that has been given through grace. Through grace. Through grace. Now, 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 Jesus modeled this grace for us. It is an, it is an undeserved gift, right? It's, 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 it's a gift that, that listen, that uh, we, we can't take credit for. Amen? It's not because we all that in the bag of chips. Not because we've been so good. Right? Not because everybody liked me. It's not because of the initials in front of or behind your name. Amen? It's undeserved. This gift was a costly gift for Jesus. It cost his life. He died to give us this gift. He died on the cross to provide us this grace gift. He descended into the lower parts of the earth and he led a host of captives to heavenly places that we would be able to have this grace gift. This gift is costly and it cost Jesus too much for us not to use it. Amen. It's not like that treadmill that you bought. <laughs> you was excited about it. And now it's, now it's a clothes rack. Amen. <laughs> well, you're looking for let go to let it go. Amen. <laughs> no, this gift cost Jesus too much for us not to use it. Message. Let God use you how he gifted you. So our understanding that this grace gift is undeserved and it's costly. It has been given to you and I through grace. 
through grace. Ephesians 2, 89, and you know that you know the verse. I know you're familiar with it. It says, for it is by grace that we have been saved through faith, right? Yes. You know, we, we, listen. So, if, listen, if it's by grace that we have been saved through faith, the same way we should serve. Mm -hmm. Through grace, by faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Saving the, serving the same way that we got saved. Yeah. Because we have been given these gifts to serve and given through grace. Therefore, we can't get the big head when somebody enjoys our preaching. Amen. Amen. Or they were blessed by our teaching. Amen. Amen. Or by our singing or our praise or whatever. Right? Right? Oh, because we're a good leader. No, no, no. We had nothing to do with our gifting. It's all about God. It's not about us. God gets the glory. God gets the credit. God gets the praise. That's one thing that I admire about your pastor. He is such a humble servant of God. That's why God uses him so greatly. He's so humble. He always gives Jesus the credit. He always gives Jesus the honor. He always gives Jesus the praise. Thank you, Dr. Morrison. Thank you for modeling that for us. The Apostle Paul is writing from his own experience because the Apostle Paul was talented. He was raised from good stock. He was educated. He records this in the letter to the Philippian church in chapter 3. Yeah, he says, I mean, he said, if anybody needs to take confidence in their flesh, I can do it. <laughs> Amen. But in there, he has a healthy perspective, a sobering perspective, right? So, 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 so here, number three in your notes, you should have it. You have it there. I must serve in humility. I must serve in humility. I must soberly, soberly. I must soberly look at myself and while serving in my gifting, I must soberly look at myself or my life while serving in my gifting. For by grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think more highly of themselves than you ought to, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Amen. The Apostle Paul, he knew about this. And in, in, in Philippians, here's what he writes here in Philippians. If you want to go there, uh, chapter 3, verses 3 through 11. Here's what he said. For it, for it is we who are the circumcised. We who worship by spirit of God. Who glory in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reason for such confidence. If anyone else thinks he has reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrew. In regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalism, righteousness, faultless. But what whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Uh, what is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, for whose sake I have lost all things. Paul had a, a sobering, right, uh, way of thinking. He had a, a sobering attitude in perspective about who he was in Christ and in his service. He said, I consider all this stuff that I just talked to you all about that I, I'm a, that I have, I consider all of this stuff garbage, rubbish, that I might gain Christ and be found in him having a righteousness, not, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Yeah. I want to know Christ. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. The Apostle Paul, 
He's communicating these same principles to these Christians in Rome and to us today, this morning, which he also he communicated to the church at Corinth. In 1 Corinthians 15, 10, here's what it says. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. I heard it said, I heard it said, I heard it said, uh, a man, uh, a man was made from the ground and he is earthly. And on his best day, he's just dignified dirt. In fact, every living person, ah, oh yes, dignified dirt. In fact, every living person is only worth $3.57. When a person dies, all of their components return to the dirt, and the value is only about $3.57. Saints, that's why we can't think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Amen? We're just not worth that much. Amen. So when you leave here and you get in your bins, it's only $3.55 driving that bins. When you leave here and you go back to your suburban home, it's only $3.55 living in the burbs. When you're wearing your designer clothes, it's only $3.57. With more money in the bank than you are actually worth. So don't believe your own press release. Think soberly about yourself as God has graced us. Because it's only by grace that we are who we are above zero. So many think soberly and soundly about ourselves. This means not to think too highly of yourself. But it also means not to think too lowly of yourself. But soberly, according to the measure God has given you. Here's the point. Thinking soberly about ourselves, we will be able to serve in humility. Amen. When we always keep the right perspective, when we always look through the lens of God uh, about our life and who we are. Amen. Amen. Jesus, again, he's our example here. Here's what he says in Philippians chapter 2, verses uh, 3 through 8. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Because we are part of a body. The body of Jesus Christ. Your attitude should be the same as Jesus Christ. Right? Who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But he made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself. Made himself low. And became obedient to death. Even to the point of death on a cross. Jesus modeled this humility of service for us. Here, 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 the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, creation of all earth, created now putting on a body in his creation. And look what he does. He models this in John 13, 12, and 17. When he had finished washing feet, he put on his clothes. And return to his place. Do you understand what I have done? He said. He asked him. You call me teacher and Lord. And rightly so. For that's what I am. Now, now that I, your Lord and teacher. Have washed your feet. You also should wash another's feet. Listen to what he says. I have set an example. That you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master. Nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things. You will be blessed if you do them. 
Ah, uh, you know it. <laughs> but you'll be blessed if you do it. And don't just be a hearer of the word. See yourself. Do it. Do it. You'll be blessed if you do it. If you follow the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Serving in your gifting requires humility. Humility. It will guard your, your head from swelling. Think soberly about ourselves as we serve. Will allow us to serve God with hearts that are pure. And minds that do not have stinking thinking. Amen. Amen. Some of us allow this stinking thinking to take us to the other end of the spectrum. Going from the stinking thinking of thinking highly of ourselves and being prideful about our gifting to thinking I'm not worthy. God can't use you. Am I talking to somebody this morning? I'm not like Pastor. I'm not like him. I mean, I don't, uh, God, I don't, God can't use me. I mean, I don't believe, I don't believe I have any spiritual gift. And you feel that, that God won't you, can't, haven't empowered every, all of the, the spiritual gifting that he had given you and the Holy Spirit in you to use your life for the purpose he called you for. So you believe the other end of the spectrum, that God could never use me, that God could never do anything through me. That's a lie straight from the enemy. Lie straight from the enemy. And some of us are sitting so sour because we're believing that lie of the enemy. We see other people doing and working and serving and they're gifting and we say, I, I can't do that. Well, you probably ain't gifted to do that. But you are part of the body of Christ. And the body is your gift. Because so many churches are limping right now. Because we're not serving in our gifting. Amen. 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 Not serving in our gifting. When we're not serving in our gifting, listen, the rest of the body got to carry you. The rest of the body got to make up for you not serving in your gifts. You know that 20 to 80 rule? 20% of the people doing 80% of the work. Oh my God. While the rest of us sit so and sour yeah. in our seat. Come on. Amen. God, God has gifted you to serve. Amen? Amen? So listen, you got to let God use you how he gifted you. You can't waste the gift. It costs Jesus too much. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let me encourage you. Those that the devil has defeated in your thought life concerning your spiritual gift. Ephesians 2.10 says it this way. For we are God's workmanship... Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for you to do. He prepared it in advance for you and I to do. My brothers and sisters, God chose you. He gifted you. He equipped you. You have a purpose. God has a plan for your life. And he has given every Christian, every Christian, spiritual gifts. Some gifts, some gifts. God has a purpose for you. He divinely ordained you for your purpose through your spiritual gifting. Listen, I want you to catch this. Don't miss this. The Apostle Paul explains that God's purpose is already in you. The Apostle Paul explains here, and you got to go to the scripture, Philippians 2.13. He explains that God's purpose is already in you. Here's what it says. It is God who is at work in you. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God is already working in you. You have been gifted to serve through, the, through your spiritual gifts. Listen, the body of Christ needs you. The body of Christ needs me. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me my time is up. 
Listen, if if you don't know what your spiritual gift is, let me give you let me give you let me give you a way to find out. The way that you find out what your spiritual gift is, you could add a V8. Listen, start serving. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Just start serving. I, listen, I was at Providence for about 17, 18 years. Uh, Brother Jones, Elder Jones, he knows. And when I didn't know what I was, I was called and, 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 and what I was spiritually gifted to do, I just started serving. And I found out. What I was, there were some things I said, nope, not supposed to be here. <laughs> Thank you all. It was fun fellowshipping with you, but this is not my spiritual gift. But then there was things that, that, that I found out th- that fit me, uh, my shape, amen, uh, my, my spiritual gifting, my personality, right, you know, my abilities and, 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 and all those things. My heart, and my, yeah, 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 my heart, my ability, my, yeah, 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 my personality, my experience. Yeah, thank you, sis. Preach with me. It, it just, I just start walking in my shape, right? You know, and when, I'm, when you're walking in your spiritual gift, and guess what? Things just come easy for you. You know what I'm saying? It comes in. When you're walking in your spiritual gift, they got to have a timer on you so you can sit down because you'll sit up here and preach all day. Amen. And we got to go eat. But when you're walking in your spiritual gift, you just do it. It's like a 200 mile a while hour wind behind you, just pushing you. And you just feel so free. And you can just preach. And you can just teach. And you can just praise the Lord. Amen. When you're walking in your spiritual gifting because it's how God shaped you it's how God made you it's how God purposed you because it is God who is at work in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure he's already waiting for you to get out there and serve he's waiting for you to get out there and do what he purposed and called you to do so if you don't know what you're supposed to do just start serving I don't think uh, Dr. Morrison and, and First Lady need to have any problem with that. Just say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'll take some assessments. I'll take some, but while I'm waiting, I'm going to serve. What you want to do? I'm going to try this. Why? Because the body needs you. 20% of the people is doing 80% of the work. Hello. <laughs> Where you at? I think that hey, I think in the multimedia and the audio ministry, they would welcome somebody to come. Come on. You want to come? Come on. We don't have no problem. Amen. I think the ushers won't have no problem welcoming you and saying, come on, usher. Amen. Wherever the Lord has gifted you, you need to serve. Amen. Here's what it says in verses uh, 4 and 5. Just as each of us has one body, with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Amen? We're all a part of the body. The Apostle Paul uses this metaphor again of this human body to describe each of our functions in the body of Christ. My spiritual gifts belong to the body. I belong to you. You belong to me. I, I, listen, uh, uh, was it Hezekiah? Hezekiah, Hezekiah did a song, and, he, and, and his song said, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me that we're all a part of God's body. Is it, it is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Because we're all a part of the body. Amen. When my back went down, my whole body shut down. I, I, I was watching uh, uh, Dr. Morrison and I seen him when we were at the Alliance, the Trial Lions picnic. And he was favoring his knee. And as he favored his knee, his, his gait was off in his walk. And guess what? The whole body was affected because that knee, right? 
when you're missing, when you're not in place in using your spiritual gift. The body here at, at Hope Alliance Bible Church suffers. Amen. Suffers because we're all a part of the body. So number four says, I must start serving because I belong to the body. And the body needs my spiritual gifts. So we serve in unity. We serve in unity, as you see it on the PowerPoint. We serve united in one body together because we belong to the body of Christ. And the body needs my spiritual gift. Uh, listen, listen. Can you just lift your hand and say, lift your hand and say, I'm gifted to serve. I'm gifted to serve. Jesus, I'm going to serve you. Because it costs you too much. Thank you for my grace gift. I'm ready to serve. Okay, Pastor, they coming, they coming to serve. They're ready to serve. <laughs> Let me land here because we got we got dinner. We got dinner here. Number five in your notes, last but not least. Serving in unity because we're part of the body, number four. But number five says we, we serve in purpose. Hmm. We serve in purpose. Or we serve on purpose. Because as we read from Philippians chapter 2, 13, it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work his good pleasure. He has a purpose for you. So how, how, do we, how do we serve on purpose? I must let God use me like he gifted me. <laughs> I must use my spiritual gifts. We have different gifts according to the grace, the grace gift, remember? Given to us the grace that, that Jesus Christ that we talked about in Ephesians. Grace gift is given to us. If a man's gift is prophesying, Look what it says. And I want you to circle a highlight in your own Bible where it says, let him or let us, whatever, let him use it proportionally to his faith. If it's serving, let him <laughs> say, do it. Let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern diligently. If it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. All that let him. I must let God use me like he gifted me. Because he's saying, if I've gifted you with these things. Now, these is only seven out of the 19 spiritual gifts here. But with this word, with this, with this, this word here used uh, in gift, it's, it's, it's the word here for charisma, which has the root word of charis or grace, which is why I told you that our spiritual gift is a grace gift given to us by God through grace. Therefore, with the grace gift given to each of us, we are to use it to encourage and edify and empower the body of Christ and build the kingdom of God. All this is done to bring glory and pleasure to God and our faith serve it here on earth. Because we want to be like Jesus. We want to be like Paul. Both prayed this, both uh, said this in, in their writing and ministry. Jesus said this in John 17, 4. He says, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Don't waste that dash. Make the most of every opportunity, every moment that God gives you to serve his kingdom. Take the assessments, get, get the serving. Get busy in the body of Christ. The body needs you. It needs your gifting. Your gift's not for you. It's for the body. My gift's not for me. It's for the body. For building up the body and encouraging the body. So that you can say at the end of your life, Lord, I brought you glory. 
here on earth. How did I do that? I completed the work you gave me to do. How? I allowed you to use me like you gifted me. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Um, thank you for our grace gift. I pray now that you would forgive us for the times that we have wasted. The times that we did not reverence, honor you for the spiritual gift you get. We forget that it's a gift from you. <laughs> a gift. We may not use other gifts that people give us. The ties, the socks, the, those things. But Lord, we want to faithfully, humbly, reverently, honoring you, serve and use our spiritual gifts for the kingdom. I pray over everyone under the sound of my voice and even the Facebook live stream, friends and family, that they will begin right now making a decision today that I will serve the Lord with gladness. I was, it won't be a labor, it'll be a love, it won't be a job, it'll be a joy because of this grace gift you have given us. Now help us, Lord. Help us to serve how you have gifted us by allowing you, God, to use our lives how you have gifted us in Jesus name let the church say amen if you agree amen praise the Lord